And we're back to learning to code and this is already the seventh exercise on exorcism. It's called vehicle purchase. Let us go over it. It's about conditionals and comparison. As always, read through it yourself. And when you get stuck, refer to my walkthrough. You have the comparisons, so it's these typical math comparisons that you have certainly seen somewhere. And here's the example given, so 1 is smaller than 3 and returns true. It also works on letters or words. In this case, apple bigger than p is false because a comes before the p in the dictionary. And it's also upper lowercase sensitive, so if you have a lower cap a, and you want to have it compared to, a, to an uppercase A, it's going to return false if you set it to equal. Let us go to task 1 and things will become a little bit more clear. What we need here is to determine if we will need a driver's license and a driver's license is only needed for a car and a truck and every other vehicle doesn't need one. So we need a simple if statement Inside of the parentheses will set the condition and inside of these curly brackets will add what we want to have returned, in this case true or else false. And now we only have to define a condition right here. Kind is given as a parameter for our function and we want to set this to equal for car. And we need a license which would be true if it is a car. But be careful here, you need these quotation marks. Same goes for the truck. As this is not a numerical value, car and truck are strings. Let's check it. And that's what we need. Let us go over an example. Here we have car as a kind. So kind equals car becomes true. Therefore our function will return true. In another example we'll have a bike. In this case kind doesn't equal car or truck. Therefore the condition for the if isn't true and will jump to the else and false will be returned for the function. Let's Add to task 2, we will choose between two potential vehicles to buy. And our criteria for our choice will be if the name of the car will come first in the dictionary compared to the other one. So we are right here in this segment of the explanation. In example, we've got the ruling. This is a W and a Toyota, which is a T. Therefore, the Toyota should be the one that we want to buy. And then we'll set up the function for it. Once again, we need an if statement and an else statement. We'll have to define a condition and afterwards what we want to return. Let's go to the condition first. We've got option 1 and option 2, so we want to compare them. And if option 1 is smaller than option 2, so in this case smaller means it comes before it in a dictionary, we want to have returned that option 1. For an example, it was the Toyota, which is option 2, that we want to return because the T comes before the W in a dictionary. But in our first statement right here, the if statement, we want to have option 1 returned as the better choice. So you write it like this, option 1 and plus quotation marks is clearly the better choice. Don't forget this white space right here.
and now we'll return for the else option 2 and then plus is clearly the better choice. Let's run the test and we'll go over an example. So here we have a Bugatti as option 1 and a Ford as option 2. The Bugatti is smaller in this case as the Ford. When we look at it from a dictionary position and therefore the if condition is true and option 1 plus is clearly a better choice will be returned. Let's go to the final task. This time we're going to calculate an estimation for the price of a used vehicle. And now we've got for the first time three conditions. So if it's less than three years old, it costs 80% of the original price. Older than 10 years makes it 50% and in between 70%. And here's also an example given that shows you this. So what we need now is not just if and else, we also need to have an else if statement in between so that we can fit all our conditions inside. So the basic structure should look like this. Parameters are given its original price and age. And we use the age for our condition and the original price to calculate the price for our estimation of the price. First condition, if the age is less than three years old, we want to have 80% of the original price returned. So we'll use the original price times 0.8. For the else if, we can add the second condition and this is if it's older than 10 years, it's original price times 0 0.5. And else, which is our third condition, it's in between 3 and 10 years, we will return the original price times 0 0.7. Let me run the test. And I've made a mistake somewhere, let me check it. It's right here, it's a little typo in my if condition. What we need is obviously age smaller than 3, not bigger. So let's go over an example here, age below 3 years. So our condition for the if is correct, therefore our original price times 0 0.8 is returned, which is 40 grand times 0 0.8, which makes it 32 grand. We go to another example, maybe something in between, like here, test 10. We've got 25 grand in 7 years. So the first condition isn't true, Second isn't, therefore we are right here in the else statement and original price times 0 0.7 is returned, which is 25 grand times 0 0.7. And this is how you can get past the vehicle purchase exercise on exorcism using JavaScript. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.